purpose of this short video, it's not going to be a full demonstration of what I did last week, but just a short video so that you can review what I did and how I got this far without my doing a whole new painting. So I'm just going to review the highlights. You asked me the, uh, to show you a list of my materials. And as soon as I'm done with this part, I'm going to show you the materials I use and some of the purposes that I have for those materials. Actually, I'm going to do that first. So the first thing that we're going to do is what am I using as a medium? And there were several mediums that I mentioned to you and each one is different and it's just a matter of preference. What we were doing initially and what you still need is a jar that is clean and that has Gamsol in it. That, that's uh, mineral spirits. Gamsol happens to be odorless. It's still turpentine. I will put that there. As you work and clean your brush, your, your gamsol is going to start to look like this. I'm using the clean one only when I need a little bit of clean gamsol. When I'm rinsing my brush in between what we're doing here, I'm using this and it will look like this. I, the secret is, don't let your brush go down to the bottom and slosh it around on the bottom because then you're going to pick up dirty paint and your brush will not be clean. I'm going to grab my brushes so that as I work, I will have them here. So what you're doing, after, after the session is over, you, you put your lids on these jars. But what you will find is that the paint, this muddy paint, is going to settle to the bottom and the clean turpentine or mineral spirits is going to be on the top. So if you're very, very careful with that, I actually did it yesterday. If you're very careful with that, you can pour off, this is just a dirty one and it's still dirty, but you can, you can tip it a little bit and you can pour off into the clean jar, the clean mineral spirits, so that you're not wasting it, you're not throwing it away. When you're all done and you figure, okay, I think I used that jar enough, you're gonna end up with a jar that looks like this. That's all dry, that's all dry paint on the bottom which now you can wipe it out and just discard it without having a cloth or paper towel that's soaked with mineral spirits. Now, at the, when we were doing the lessons in my home, I was using this. That's the jar that has the coils. Now, right now, all the paint, that I used with this, and I'm not using this anymore, I'll tell you why in a minute, is sunk to the bottom. It's really gunk. And there's clean mineral spirits showing. So if I took that and I have a dirty brush, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna take this brush, I'm gonna get it, get some paint on it, and if I take it and rub it on the coils, I'm actually picking up the dirty residue that was on those coils, and this is not totally clean. This, you know, I haven't used it in such a long time that it's not too bad, but I think you could also make sure after you're done or when you start, that you have those coils clean. But you see, there's always some residue. So whatever you're painting is going to have a little bit of that in, um, in your mineral spirits. So I prefer this. Now, as far as solvents, so you can 
you can use just the gamsole. Gamsole, that's this. Comes in a jar, it comes smaller than this. This is the, when I was teaching in the home, I would buy a gallon and it would last me a long time. Uh, but I, I really don't need to do that here and it just takes up more space. So I buy this size, and when, when it's down as far as this one is, I have already bought a new jar. So you can use just that alone. That's what we were doing when I taught at the Passaic County Art Center, and, but there, there's an advantage to using um, a medium. And I told you, during that lesson about Galgid Light, which is a gambling product. Both of these are gambling products, and I told you how I would use them. So if I'm using solvent-free gel, gambling solvent-free gel, I can put that on my palette, and it results in um, a glob, you know, it, it's not running. If I am using this, I keep that in a clean jar. Actually, this is left over from my last session, and it has gotten solid because it's. So if I'm going to use this, the Galkid Light. I'll pour a little bit in that jar and it'll just sit on top of what is already in that jar. Now the reason for using it is this. I, if I, I include it in all my paint. I'm, I'm using the Galkid light. I'm gonna put it over here. So if I used um, solid free gel, I would do the same thing with this. So if I have some white paint initially, I have all my colors left from the other day, and um, they're really pretty good yet, I think, usable. Some of them dried up, and, and I just, you know, I scraped it off, because this is just informative. This is just a demonstration. This is just to refresh in your mind everything that I mentioned when I did the lesson that did not record. But it should not make a difference because it's, it's when we're recording our lesson, we have so many um, times when when you'll talk and ask questions and uh, and if I were doing this as a just a demo, I could have done that part of it in about thirty to forty five minutes with no interruptions. But it's good when we're doing it and we're asking questions and you're you're saying, well, maybe I didn't get that. Can can you please repeat it? So that is why that video, it was an hour and a half last time. It can be two hours, uh, but, but this is just to sort of review. So I'm not doing the whole thing over. All right, so if I am using the Galkin Light, oh, the, the point that I was making about using the solvent-free gel or the Galkin Light is, that it results, it gives it a sheen, you know, almost like a little bit of varnish, which it probably, the, the Galkid light probably has some something in it that is looking like a varnish and also the solvent-free gel, except for there is no solvent in it. So if you prefer to work solvent-free, you can use the solvent-free gel. If you're, you were going, I'm going to show you what I do with that. So I'll just take a little bit of this white. I'm wiping it off. I'm taking about an equal amount of the gel, and I'm going to mix it with that white. So everything that I use to make, like the the blue and the lighter and lighter that I that I am using the white, the value changes that I'm using white to do it. I'm using it from this pile of white that has the um, solvent-free gel in it. And when I'm using just paint, I still have to have, still 
have to take a little bit as I work if I'm going to use it with a little yellow. I'll, I'll mix it in there. Sometimes I'll do it just with my brush like so and pick up some of the gel and mix it, mix it that way. Now I know that if I'm going to use that, that it's going to it's going to be in every everything that I do. You can almost see the shine, you know, as I just did it. I don't know if you can see that shine, but you will get you will get a shine. So now, if I'm taking this brush, and I just I just picked up this this brush the signature of cotton. It's actually a watercolor brush. Uh, which you can use. So now I want to go into another color. So I will then, and I'm keeping it over where I can reach it when I'm working. So I wiped in there, and now my brush is fairly clean. I'm going to move it where I can do it. So you realize I'm, I'm using the dirty jar, the jar with the dirty um, mineral spirits or gamsol. And I'm cleaning my brush as much as I can to get that color out. Again, I am not doing it down in the bottom because there's a lot of paint in there. So what I'm doing is just sort of swashing it around as I clean it. And then I am wiping, and I really have that pretty clean. The secret is, as you work, to always have a pile of folded Viva paper towels. These are the Viva Signature Cloth. They're smooth, they don't have a texture like Bounty. And actually uh, Viva does make one with a little, little texture in it. So if I have now taken that and I have sloshed it around in that 30 gamsol, and look, I really have most of the paint out of there. So that's why I do that. If I am using the, um, all right, so I, I'm going back. That was your, that was your solvent-free gel. So if I'm using that, I'm using a little bit. I'm always making sure that whatever I do has, has some of that in it. And if I'm using it with the white, then it's already there. So now if I'm doing it with the gal kid, then I have to I have to have some that I can put that I'm going to mix with the other pile. So this is like something you have to do a little carefully. Uh, just drop a few things. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move that until I have about the same consistency. It's thinning out the paint somewhat, and if I feel it's too runny, then I'm just going to add more white, or whatever the paint is. I'm gonna leave it like that for now, because that was just meant to show you how to use that. Now what we did when we started, I'm trying to, keep this um, so that we we know what we did. And I just have this little canvas because the first thing that we did was, I'm putting it here for, for now, actually you can probably see it, is um, we did this, we, we primed our canvas. We primed it with, I was using the transparent oxide red and and viridian you can use something and i'm going to show you what you can use i can change that by taking a little bit i'm going to take the red that's like the like that's the red orange and i'm going to take some blue and make i think that green's probably dry so i'm going to make make a green and I'm going to mix those two together and I'm getting a very earthy tone and that's what I want. For this part I'm taking a little bit of the clean 
mineral spirits. It's good to take a clean, but my brush is dirty, so I'm just gonna take it, put some of it on the, on the palette, and what I just did is probably too much. But I want to thin that out so that I can coat this. Now, I could take that and I could add any color that I want. Suppose I'm, I'm gonna add a little more, more green. I think there's enough on there. That's what we did. So you don't have to have, you don't have to use your transparent oxide red and viridian, but it, the reason I like those is because they're transparent. These, these are opaque and yet the coating that I'm making on here is going to be very transparent. I don't want this to be heavy. I explained when I work, the reason for doing this is because I want earth tones showing through when I'm done. We did it, we did the tree part here. Uh, I decided to do that and then I showed you, I'm gonna clean that brush, so I'm still working with, with these colors. And then, then what I did was I thinned out a little bit of the ultramarine and I ran it up here and then I, I did a little bit of the alizarin and we ended up wiping it. See, I have it this far. Now, this is just the way I'm climbing this canvas. So I will wipe it and I can, I can take my towel and make a little texture there. But I just want, I want the canvas that I'm not working on, on, on white. So if I were doing that, that's as far as we went with that. The next step that we did was, I said, I'm using for this, I'm going to show you the brushes that I have. You don't have to buy my brushes. It's important to get good brushes. I believe in investing in good brushes. They don't last forever, I want you to know that. So very often I replace them. I have a big jar of them that, you know, you know that I don't use anymore. And very often I'll give them to my granddaughter. Uh, when, when I was in Hawthorne, I would let students who forgot their brushes use the brushes that I was no longer using. So you don't have to throw them out. Sometimes it's good to have a scrubby brush so you can make those kind of textures. So if we got this far, I said then, now we are going to draw with a brush, map it out. And what we did was, I, I'm going to, to do that, use this. All right, right now, all right, I'm gonna tell you about that brush later. All right, so if I take the same color, that I was using, it can be anything, but just you don't want it, you don't want it heavy. So what we did was I said, this part, I said, when you look at your photograph, I just happen to have my first painting here, because I don't, uh, the photograph, I don't know where it is right now, but you have the photograph. I said, look at the photograph and squint. Don't, like Brian said something, ah, I'm making lollipop trees. And I said, that's because you're looking at this, this uh, picture and you're trying to draw it instead of drawing shapes. We're talking about shapes. And I said to you, if I were to take that photograph apart or even that painting, I could divide it and make like a puzzle. So big shapes. And, and I remember doing that. I remember doing that as an exercise. If you take your photograph and you know make a, a paper copy that's not photo, photography uh, paper, and you can do a black and white, it's a good thing, and then cut it apart and make it into a puzzle. Say, I'm gonna use these big shapes and I'm gonna make it a puzzle out of them 
so that I know that where the, the different shapes start and stop. So what I would do is this big shape back here, mass, it's a mass, it's a tree mass. It's light and dark. So I am not painting brush uh, branches. I am not painting leaves. I'm painting light and shadow. I'm painting values. I'm painting distance. So I'm painting uh, something that is going to be like the vanishing line. I told you that when we look at this, if you're starting here, your eye travels in an S shape, back and forth. There are different shapes that you can use. And ultimately comes back here. And I have determined that my horizon line is about there. So then I'm taking apart those shapes and I'm going to make, this is one shape. I think I better just do this a little darker for you. That's a shape, that's where those, those trees are. It actually is a, a, probably a pine tree. Then the area here that crosses over the horizon, let's, let's do it this way. Then there is this shape where, where the light is coming down that hill and it's coming into the road. And then there is a path that's here. And then there is the foreground, all these, there's meadows. And there is, there are these pine trees, which I can't really do too much with this tiny canvas. I just didn't want to use up all my canvases to, to do this. So now I have, I have an idea there, the, the horizon lines back there, those houses are going to be there, the path, the street comes out and then comes in and then it shows up again here. So the idea is we, when I did this, this is that tree mass. This is another one and they are evergreen or pine trees. I drew the house in the background and as it goes into the distance, things get smaller. You have to remember that. Then I brought the um, this this line in, and there's a lot to be done on this. This is going to be a highlight green, the lighter. Then that shape, this shape right here, comes all the way over here. I drew that, and you can see where I'm going to put the path in that goes in. This is the street, and I. On my painting, I made sure that there's a little bit of the green here. So now my now my street is like this. Actually, that's a street back there where the light is going to hit it. Then, then it comes here and here, and it gets wider as it comes toward the foreground, and it actually is going to lead off, off, off the canvas. So I have this, I have this, and I will adjust everything as I, as I work, but I know that this is narrow here, and there's a street back there, and my path, and I will bring these greens up over that. So that's what we did. Then, the next thing we did, and just let me get this little sample because I want to show you that again also. And that is this. So if I have this whole, if this is just the foreground and I'm using my transparent, I'm gonna use the, the uh, meridian I'm using and I'm trying to get that other color. So let me use, red and suppose this is my what I have left of the of the foreground of that one let me get this on here for you 
there it, that's the color I want. So I have this. And it's in. And at this point, it's wet. So what I told you is then, and that's a bigger, that's a bigger area, you have to realize that. So if this is this is all this part, and I said I want to indicate where some of those yellow flowers are going to be. And I want to go back to, to as much of the original canvas color as I can. So on the bigger, bigger uh, canvas, I, I wiped it out with um, paper towels, with the Viva. If you can find these, this is an eyebrow something or other that you use, you know, when you're going to clean your eyebrow pencil off. And I have the name of it that I'm going to give you uh, when, you know, when I send this list. Uh, so it, they're, they're eyebrow things. So what you can do with this is I can say, I want a little, that's where one of my flowers is going to be. That's where another, look at how, how, how uh, right down to the original canvas color. And again, I am not thinking, oh, there's flower, 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 little dots. You're going to make areas because we're going to work around it. So if that, if these flowers are going to be here, and again, I'm thinking about leading your eye into the background. I can take the other side. This side has more of a rounded point. This side is a little bit taper <clears throat> and they're they're excellent so i you know then i would figure right like, i want those flowers to to sort of leave my eye into this painting into the distance and again i'm creating that s that curve that's going to take you back there and ultimately lead you to where where that house is. If I want to clear it out and I wanted to make that area, I'm going to do it here. Say this 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 part here, I can do that at this point and just clear out so that when I'm done, which is what I did there, the underpainting, the other um when we toned, when we put the wash on the canvas, this time I let it dry. So that's what came out when I wiped it. So I have, this is where the path is. This is where I'm going to concentrate on putting some really sunlit color, green, yellow or green. Uh, but you can see that now I have almost a monotone. This week I was working a little bit on the trees. And uh, another thing you can do with that is if you, if, they, if you wanted to make sure you had a tree trunk when you're done. These are great. I got it and I finally found them in Stop and Shop. The ones I had before are pointed tip applicators and I just didn't like them. They weren't doing what I wanted. And today when I went to Stop and Shop, I couldn't believe it. There they are. That's exactly what I want. And I am going to, well, you can see their eyebrow cleaners or whatever you want to call them. So I will find them and, and uh, let you know exactly what they are. So that's, that's a tool. Then I told you that I like to write with my wipeout tool. So if I were at this point, and I'm going to do it on, on the actual canvas, because I, I didn't have it, it was right in front of my nose when we did our lesson. So what I'm doing is, what I will do right now, is I'm going to put some green, but probably dark. And I want to tone it down, I'm toning it down with the red. And I want that to be pretty dark over here. 
Keep your corners dark. Now I am going to show you how I can bring it back down to the original undercolor. But if I just do that, see, I am not. I'm going to go over it later. I want to leave a little bit of that dirt showing through, and I can do that now. But my purpose right now is just that I want to show you how I use this tool to sign my painting. This is the point that you have to do that. If you wait for the paint to dry, it's not going to work. Now for me, it's kind of hard, but I'm going to try to do it so you can see. But I'm going to wipe it off when I'm done. So if I wanted to put my name here, and I had done it initially, it would be lighter. It's, it's actually not. All right, let me do it on here. Let me show you. With that, I am going to have, I will, it will be necessary for me to do it with a brush when I'm done. And I have trouble with that. So suppose we were at this point and you just have that there. So I'm going to show you how I can write my name. And it will bring it back down to the white. So I have my name, I have this little thing sign. What's really important when you do that initially is make, if you're gonna frame, you have to make sure that you're leaving uh, an eighth of an inch on the edge or you're gonna lose your name and enough on the bottom that, if, that the, what they call the rabbit of the canvas doesn't, uh, doesn't cover your name, cover your signature. So make sure you put it in a place where it's not going to be covered if you put the painting in the frame. Now the next thing that we did was we started to establish some of our darks. I started out with very, very dark. I mixed a very dark green so that I know the sunlight on this is actually coming from behind and it's causing a shadow on the street and it's causing highlight on some of those grasses. It was causing a, a, a lot of light on the, the road and really beautiful shadows. So we did that. So, so far we have primed the canvas. We have uh, wiped out and we've done this foreground color, this wash of color thin. We've wiped, I've wiped out where some of those yellows are going to be rather than have to cover uh, the canvas with opaque paint. And I have, I have left all those things, but now I'm establishing the darks. Um, you can see on my painting that I have the darks in the trees. So again, you don't, you, you do the dark colors thinly. Do them thinly. So if I were doing that on this and saying, okay, this is this is where this tree is going to be. And I just sort of again real thin covered it. I might might choose to lighten it just a little bit, but then you can take your paper towel, because you're gonna be working bigger than what I'm doing here. So if I decided, okay, that sunlight is coming in here and I'm going to establish where the lights are going to be. There will be darks in between. And we. this is part of what we're going to start to work on at the end of this week. We're gonna to start to bring this painting up. I don't want, I know that there are darks in here and that's what I did. I had that beautiful earthy color behind it, but I know, I'm, I know I'm going to have to add more darks in here. I know that I want my corners dark. I shouldn't be doing this now because I want to show you, but I will be able to convince you 
that that is a tree that the branches that you have these lights showing through poke holes we're gonna do all that this week but if we are we this is about as far as we got and then we started working on our sky what we did there with a very clean brush you don't want any contamination in your brush you also don't want a palette knife that has paint on it and then what i did was i'll take this falcon see now i have that very thin almost too thin and i'm taking my ultramarine and i'm mixing that and i'm making just like you did on your color wheel that's the purpose of this to realize that i'm going to start not that dark i'm starting with about that color value and i'm making it lighter and lighter and lighter and i'm making it lighter by adding white then it's too thin I know that's too thin. I can tell. So I'm going to add a little bit of just uh, white. Now I have a good consistency of paint, and I can do that. I always have paper towels in my hand, Viva. Now, when I come to the horizon, then I want to add a touch. I need take your knife and just tip it just tip it till you have a little bit of color on it and then i'm going to take this blue and then i'm going to lighten it and it will have a yellow so almost a greenish tone to it which is what that has and then that is going to create distance so I'm doing it this way. Let me see. Let me see if I can show you on this canvas. Problem is that it has a lot of paint on it. I guess I said, all right. So if I'm doing that, grab a brush here, any brush. I started out in the sky, and you have to realize this has the residue on it because I've been using it as my demonstration. So if I take that, I'm doing. Remember I said don't, you can, you know, you could, but I, what I like about making your brush dance is, is that um, you have these, you'll see, it'll glow, it'll glow. So as I come down on the canvas, I am lightening that blue. And the closer I get to the horizon line, I'm going to add this color. And I do want it a little bit more yellow. But you see that has, has yellow at the horizon and it is creating atmosphere. That's what I want, that's the word. That creates atmosphere. So that was another thing that I used in the lesson that I demonstrated and um, to show you what we're doing with this so that basically is about as far as we got with this so what are the tools that i'm using actually i showed you a lot of them already you're using the galkid light we're using Gamsel, you need two jars, one for clean Gamsel, one for one that we're um, working with as we go. You're using um, the solvent-free gel, it's your choice, you don't use both. Solvent-free gel is not as runny, it might be more, it might be easier for you to use that to start with that. I like the Galkid light because it is really putting a beautiful sheen on it. I can see it already. The sky has dried 
and it almost looks like I varnished it. That does not mean that I couldn't go over it. I can go over it and, and do the same thing, make sure I have that, that medium in it. And medium has to be in everything that I do, if that's what I'm doing. Then um, the other thing that I did was the eyebrow stuff. That's this. I bought two, oh, here I have it. Mine is, oh, here it says eyeshadow application, applicators. So if you're using eyeshadow, these are what you use when you need a clean applicator and the one that's in the little container is all contaminated. So if you can find them, these are great. I really like them. And then uh, what you also in the, in the supplies, the brushes that I'm using are, are um, this one, I mean, th these are ones I get in Blick. The Da Vinci Top Echo. And I told you to get, it's either a bright or a flat. Most of them in, you know, in the categories that are there are, are bright. They'll say, they'll say bright. This one, you know, it's in the, you know, in the container. So it can be a bright. I told you this is a filbert. The difference is, let me get this out of the way so you can see it better. So this is a filbert. The filbert has a rounded edge. This is a bright or a flat, and it has that flat edge. I prefer those. So we have that one. I have the, you can use, these are the most expensive. The Escada Modernista, very expensive. But I like the spring. I like that it's sperm and yet it has it has a nice spring to it. But get a good brush, but it doesn't have to be the most expensive. So also you can get the Windsor Newton Monarch. They're very, very good brushes. I have probably from Raphael. This is almost like a watercolor brush, but make sure you get a good one. Then, then there are rosemary brushes, and those um, you can get Wind River Arts. They are no more expensive than the ones I mentioned, and some of them are even less expensive, but they're excellent. So this is an ivory lawn, and that had that sort of like that. Da Vinci brush. With them also, which I would say you don't have to do, get the one one brush that will help you when you're doing branches and stuff is the number one. It's a number one. I think I might have not have it right here because I washed it this morning. The Da Vinci, Da Vinci makes that's a round. A number one round, this, the, it's a pointed brush. And with that, you'll be able to do branches. With these brushes, actually, as long as they are really clean and you've, you've kept them nice, you can use, see this one is already getting a little funny. I wouldn't use that, but I can, I, here is, this is the, Da Vinci, which has this point, and I could, I could, depends on where you hold it. You're not going to hold it like a pencil. I can get a looser line if I, the further away that I hold it, I could make a very, very fine line with that. If I'm going here, it's going to push the bristles, and you're going to get a wider line. So those are some of the brushes. This one happens to be a rosemary. Uh, I wouldn't get that just yet. Just don't worry about that. Then the other thing that you need is a scraper. And when I'm done, 
I take this, or even in between when you're, when you're painting, and I don't want that yellow in there, or I don't want that brown in there, I'm going to scrape it off my palette and wipe the blade, and you're going to have a clean area to mix paint. So if I had violet there and I wanted to mix a yellow, I'm going to get a gray. I don't want that. I think that pretty much covers what we did on Friday without all the extra stuff in between. And I just hope that I have recorded this. So I am going to say for now, this is the demo that I want to send to you. And um, when it's finished loading, I will send it. So I'll see you on Friday.